Hey everybody, C3 here, doing another video today, this one, uh, this one is on the Dell Inspiron, uh, what are you, you're a Dell Inspiron, E1505, what we're doing today with this little beast is we're going to be uh, taking it apart, not only to clean the vent and put fresh thermal compound on it, but also to tighten up the hinges. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. I can probably do this on camera, assuming most of these screws aren't too tight. I'm first going to take the RAM out and examine that because good RAM is essential to system operation. Okay, so we have only two 512 meg sticks of Hynix DRAM. Uh, that's going to need to be replaced because 512 meg is not enough. At least one gig, I mean. Um, I'm going to take the hard drive out and see what that is because I don't remember off the top of my head. This only has one hard drive screw, which is perfectly fine. Those screws get lost all the time. I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so our hard drive is a Toshiba MK1032GSX. Not ideal, but fine. And now I get to... Go ahead and remove everything else, such as the battery, which has a full charge, and the CD-ROM drive, which should come out fairly easily. Let me just go ahead and get this screw out. All right. So if you don't know, this is one of the two laptops that I got from one of my friends who lives in Illinois. Um, he sent me these in exchange for some headphones along with some other things. And if you haven't seen that video, uh, I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner of the screen. Uh, there we go, got the CD drive out, almost. It's coming. Here we go. I hope I was not covering up the microphone the entire time there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing mostly apart, and I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so here we are at the hinges. I figured I needed to take most of this apart, so I took all of the screws out of the back, which are sitting in a convenient pile here. And I've gotten the little bar thing off that sits right here. As with a lot of Dell and Sperons of the mid-2000s, this is exactly how you do it. Um, I'll put this back just kind of in place so you can see it. If you look over here, you'll see that there's a little notch right there. If you just stick a screwdriver under there and pry up, it'll come off. Obviously not that easy. There's some snaps on it, but yeah. Now let me show you just how floppy these hinges are. And that's with no movement of the actual hinge. So, um, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down, which I can't do with one hand. So I'll be back when I tighten those. Okay, so I've gotten the hinge screws tightened down, and they were positively loose. Uh, it's still kind of floppy, but that's just the nature of the structure. Uh, this is screwed directly into plastic, and you can see as I move it up and down, I think that the plastic flexes with it. So, yeah, not much solving that problem, but at least I have the hinges tighter than they were before. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the keyboard off, which should be fairly simple, and hopefully then I will have access to the uh, CPU area. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I got that off, and I'm definitely going to have to remove this hand rest here. Uh, but that's not a big deal, and I'll get that done fairly quickly, I hope. Um, probably going to need to remove this button board, but again, that's not really that big of a deal. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do all that, and I'll be back when I finish it. You can definitely see that the CPU is right here, though, so, yeah. Okay, so I, ha I wound up having to remove the screen as well as the bottom plate, but that's no big deal. So now we have access to the uh, CPU, heatsink, and probably GPU as well. And we'll get to removing this now, which I probably can do on camera. Let me go ahead and try. Yeah, these are not horribly tight. So I'm not doing this in the way that it's numbered but I don't care I'm doing it 2-1 and I'm gonna go 3-4 because I'm a rebel if I was an even bigger rebel I could have gone 4-3 but you, you gotta know where to stop just 
Okay. This is really hard to do with one hand. Ah, oh, dang it. Well, there we go. I broke the laptop with that. Nah, just kidding. Almost done. Here's our last screw. Okay. And here we are. Not much dust in it. But the thermal compound is dry as a rock. So can rectify both of these things while we're in here. So let me go ahead and get this heat sink cleaned out and uh, fix up the thermal compound. Okay, so here we are with a completely clean heat sink. Still a little water in it maybe, but that'll evaporate. Um, so now, got my cotton balls, four of them. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and clean the heat sink and see if you of the thermal compound, and I forgot my thermal compound, but I'll, yeah, I'll get that done and then I'll show you guys thermal compound application, because why not? Okay, so back with the heat sink, or the thermal compound and the um, heat pad off. Uh, that, that thermal compound was so dry that um, polishing it, or well, you know, attempting to kind of grind it off with a... Uh, with a cotton ball didn't really work and I wound up having to scrape it off with this same story with the uh, thermal pad here it was so degraded and horrible that it just broke away and I had to wind up scraping that off as well couldn't really get the CPU very well judging by how dry the stuff was but now we can go ahead and put some thermal compound on this is Arctic Silver 7 I think or something like that Arctic silver, whatever. So, what do I do for thermal compound? Judging by the long chip, the longness of the chip, I will just put a thin, very thin band of thermal compound on the chip, like so. And I'm gonna do sort of a cross on this one since it's quite a bit larger. The idea here is you don't want to go overboard with it. Although Linus Tech Tips kind of showed that too much may not matter, it's still of importance to me, and thus I do it like so. So now we have our heat sink, our thermal compound in place, so I'm going to go ahead and replace the heat sink carefully because I don't want to fuck up my thermal paste job here. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down and we'll begin the reassembly process. Be back for that. Alright, so there we go. Our heat sink is tightened down and we should be good to start reassembling this thing proper. Um, I'm not going to really show that on video because I can't do it with one hand so I'll just skip to the point in which that is done. So I got it all assembled. As you may be able to notice, I used all the screws! It's a miracle. So let's go ahead and start this up. She works. Goody goody. So that's about it for this video. All I really, all I really need to do is that. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.